fellow mathematicians, welcome to the nearly last episode of Complex Numbers But Different. First bonus episode, we are going to diagonalize complex numbers in matrix form today and do with this information whatever you wish. We are just going to diagonalize them and see what we are going to get out. Now, diagonalization, what is this exactly? I have done it several times on this channel before. What we want to have is, if we multiply our complex number z by a vector, we want to find scaling vectors, okay? Meaning, or scaling factors, those factors, those eigenvalues, are the values of our eigenvalue problem, okay? Of our linear transformation in this case, which only scale vectors and do not shift them or rotate them or whatsoever. That's our eigenvalue problem and we are going to go ahead and calculate ourselves the characteristic polynomial. Meaning here of z in this case is the determinant of z minus our eigenvalues times the identity matrix in two dimensions and we want this to be equal to zero. Okay? If we were to write all of this out we would end up with a, so the determinant of this thing then, a negative b, b and a minus lambda 0, 0, lambda. Okay, we have a 2 by 2 matrix, meaning we are going to end up with two eigenvalues. Hopefully, we, we should. Okay, <laughs> now addition is defined pointwise. Okay, meaning we are going to end up with the determinant of a minus lambda, negative b, b and a minus lambda. And now determinant of this thing is exactly those multiplied together. Meaning this is going to give us a minus lambda squared or lambda minus a squared, it really doesn't quite matter, plus b squared. We want this to be equal to zero, meaning we are going to subtract b squared on both sides. Okay, this thing right here is wiggling around, it's a bit weird. <laughs> meaning this implies that lambda minus a squared is thus negative b squared. And now we would like to solve for lambda, but here comes a problem in. What happens if we take the third on both sides? Square root of negative one. This is where we run into huge problems. We have found out what complex numbers are before, but only in matrix form. And now we want to take the square root, but we are running into real trouble right here, okay? We cannot take the square root of a negative number. And now we are going to translate our problem of complex numbers into regular complex numbers, an extension of the real numbers, basically. So before we had that some matrix i squared is going to result in negative the identity. This time we want to translate it into the real problem, <laughs> real problem of complex numbers, okay, re re uh, never mind, <laughs> it really wasn't funny. We want to define ourselves some i squared imaginary unit yet again, such that this thing is going to result in negative one. If we use this convention right here, we, we are just translating it into non-matrix things, okay? Then we can actually solve this thing. Square root of negative one is thus, okay, square root of negative one. So square roots in normal case are only defined for positive values. That's why I'm doing this right here. But we are going to act like there's a square root of negative one, meaning this thing right here is going to result in lambda minus a is equal to, okay, we, we can thus break up the third into positive or negative i, our imaginary unit, and then square root of b squared is the absolute value of b, but we are taking the principal, uh, the, the positive or negative branches right here into account, meaning just b. Now we can add a on both sides, meaning our two solutions, our eigenvalues are going to result in a plus minus i times b. And this thing right here are complex numbers. How you maybe already know them, okay? Those are just regular complex numbers. And they pop up as the eigenvalues, the scaling factors of our complex numbers in matrix form. Meaning our complex numbers in matrix form are actually deeply connected with our regular complex numbers that you maybe already know about. And now we can go through this whole finding eigenvector stuff. Okay, this is just straight through calculations. It's not too hard doing this stuff. Meaning, we are going to grab ourselves z, then we are going to subtract the first eigenvalue times the identity matrix from it, then we are going to multiply it with some two by one vector xy, and we wanna have this to be the zero vector, okay? Now, this right here is going to result in a system of equations. At first, we are going to have, okay, 
first eigenvalues, so z minus the first eigenvalues on the main diagonal, meaning a and a is going to cancel out. Positive is going to become negative, so negative i times b times, we are going to put it on top, times x, and then we are going to have, okay, negative b times y is thus equal to zero. Okay, this is the first one. And also, what other stuff do we have? Well, this is going to stay how it is, so b times x. Okay, and also this is going to result in negative b, so this is the same entry just with y right here. So negative um, i times b times y being equal to zero. Those are actually linearly dependent, meaning we can multiply this second equation by some factor to actually arrive at the first equation. What is this factor going to be? Well, why not multiply it by negative i right here? If we were to multiply this by negative i, okay. Those two actually fit. i times i by definition, our new definition is going to result in negative one. Negative negative one is going to become positive, but we are going to multiply by negative i. Meaning overall, we are going to get rid of this, and those two are exactly the same. Meaning we have one free parameter, meaning our geometric, um, our uh, geometric multiplicity of our eigenspace is actually equal to the algebraic multiplicity of our eigenvalues. Meaning we are just going to say let y be equal to one. And thus we are going to end up with this equation resulting in. Okay, let's say b is not equal to zero, we can divide both sides by it, meaning we are going to end up with negative i times x minus one is equal to zero. We can multiply both sides by negative one and then we can subtract to one on both sides, leaving us with x being equal to negative one over i. If we divide both sides by i, it's not equal to zero. It's, it's not equal to zero, okay? Zero times zero would be zero, but that's not the case, okay? It's not equal to negative one. Meaning overall, what we can do, we can expand, since it's not equal to zero, numerator and denominator by i over i. i times i is negative one, okay? Getting rid of this thing right here, leaving us with positive i. Okay, meaning we have a complex valued eigenvector right here. Our first eigenvector, v1, is thus equal to um, i and one. You can go through the same process just with the second eigenvalue right here. I'm not going to go through this process. I'm leaving this as an exercise to the viewer to actually arrive at a second eigenvector being equal to negative i and one. Meaning, now, we know what our t is. Our t is just a diagonal matrix with our eigenvalues on the main diagonal, okay? This is our t. I'm going to write everything out in a second, meaning we have a plus ib, 0, 0, a minus ib, and also we have our s, which is just a tuple of those two vectors in matrix form, so s being equal to i, negative i, 1 and 1, and also we can calculate our s inverse, okay, that's, that's quite easy, s inverse is nothing other than 1 over the determinant, so i minus minus i is going to give us 1 over 2i, times, okay, I have done this inverse matrix stuff before, take a look at the trivia channel. We are going to interchange those two, one and i, and we are going to put negative sign in front of those. So i and negative one. Meaning overall, we can diagonalize our complex number. Any complex number a minus b, b and a, can actually be expressed as, okay, s times t times s to the negative one. So one over two i, that's just a scalar, we can bring it to the front, then we have i negative i, one, one, times a plus ib, zero, zero, a minus ib, and then times this thing right here. Okay, I'm terribly sorry, I don't have enough space left. So one, i, negative one, and i. Yes, this is it. Those are our complex numbers, they analyze. Do with this information whatever you like, okay? I just want to show you the connection that our complex numbers in matrix form are actually deeply connected with our complex numbers that we know and love and use on a daily basis, at least I do. And you can plug those eigenvalues into here and you are actually going to run yeah, into exactly the statement that those are our only two eigenvalues that we have. One other thing um, I wanted to put in the end is if we have, why did I put this line right here? If we have a plus ib 
okay, we are going to take us two complex numbers and we are going to multiply them together. So a plus ib times c plus id. If we multiply those together, we are going to have ac. So this makes ac and then i times i is going to be negative bd. And we have our imaginary part. You know this notion by now. So plus i times, okay, what's an imaginary part? bc and we have plus ad. I want you guys to notice something. We can actually put this into our matrix form. This thing right here, we can interpret this as a two by two vector, okay, in the R2. If we have this being a vector, AC minus BD, and we also have AD plus BC, we can actually express this as this matrix multiplied together with the vector CD, okay? I hope you can see where this comes from. A minus B, B and A, CD. If you put this vector on top, you're actually going to end up with exactly this. This is just a little side note because this right here is actually the transformation matrix. And one way to arrive from the complex numbers that you know and love to our complex numbers matrix form. Yeah, this is the transformation matrix to actually express them as two by two matri matrices. And this basically concludes this video right here. But before we actually end the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Brain.org, for sponsoring yet another episode, so the third episode by now, of Complex Numbers But Different. Brain is an online learning platform which focuses on active learning and problem solving. By working through their over 60 interactive courses in math, physics, science and computer sciences, Brilliant is the perfect place to hone your STEM skills. This very month, Brilliant added brand new interactive content to their courses, which are a lot of fun to solve and work through. I for myself really enjoy their interactive math course at the moment, which offers you a fun and challenging environment to learn mathematics intuitively. If this feels like it's something for you, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you can get free access to Brilliant, which allows you to try out a lot of their content. Also, the first 200 people to actually use the link down there in the description get the chance to get 20% of an annual premium subscription. Try out Brilliant and support the channel this way. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, you know how you can do this. And up until the next video, have flamble day. Ciao.